brews in-house beer and even has brunch every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. To learn more about their daily specials or to book a private party, visit GCFB.com. Make sure you head over to Granite City in Northville at the corner of 7 Mile and Haggerty or the Troy location at 16 Mile and I-75. Are you looking to play at the next level? MSN is now offering player recruitment videos. We are excited to partner with you and your family in getting you to the next level. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Now Worrell has a good cutback from him. He'll fire one, and that's going to go in! of Michigan Student Athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We were responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic students can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stand should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports while maintaining a high level of respect for all those involved in the games. Enjoy, enjoy the game! game. take your game to the next level. Did you know that MSN is now offering player recruitment videos? Our packages include a player profile where you show your preferred positions, the club, the league or school that you play in, your current coach contact information, and more. The highlight videos could be self-submitted 15 to 30 clips that will be put into a three to seven minute long video. Video review of your huddle, VO, or other platforms that you might have video on, as well as for an additional charge, MSN can come out and film games for you to create those clips. Our coach evaluation process, which is also an additional charge, where we have college coaches from various levels across the United States that will review your game film and provide feedback on how to improve that film, as well as also evaluating your play and what you can improve on. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Our mission is to help players take their game to the next level and reach their potential. Not only do we help develop fundamental technical skills such as ball control in tight spaces with different surfaces, dribbling at speed and changing direction, using a variety of 1v1 skills to create space, receiving on a half turn, hook turn, and out of the air, 
finishing off the dribbling, one touch, volleys, and headers. We help players get comfortable performing these skills at game speed with pressure and with both their dominant and non-dominant foot. In addition, we help players with their speed of play for one. Hello, everybody, and welcome here into Dick by Stadium in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Avondale High School is the place to be. Is Dan Stickrat and Jonathan Turner bring you the Ohio Valley ECNL Boys Soccer, Ohio Elite, all the way from Cincinnati, Ohio, coming in here and taking on the National Soccer Club from Shelby Township, Michigan. We're excited to bring you this action. It's our third and final game here of the day, and we welcome you in for this 05-06 matchup. High school boys soccer, 45-minute halves. Oh, boy. And, Dan, as I welcome you back in here, we ready for <clears throat> another game. Third game on the main field here, Auburn Hills Avondale High School is the place to be. We are the Michigan Soccer Network, and this is the 0506 Ohio Elite in the Nationals SC. So this is mainly high school seniors and a couple juniors. With some of the best players in their respective states here to clash. There are moments away here from the start of this match. We'll, talk, we'll, we'll give, we don't know who's starting on these, on these teams until they basically tell us, um, but um, we will bring it to you nonetheless. Players' names and whatnot here throughout this game when we know more. Uh, so that typically comes in the form of us uh, knowing more when, uh, when they're on the field. So we'll bring that to you when we can. Uh, in the meantime, we'll tell you the names of players who are on the pitch right now. Or not on the pitch right now, but will, I mean, are on the pitch. On the roster. On the roster, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so we'll look here. Uh, so Joseph Tirico, Nico Dinopoulos, Reed Dennis, Nicholas Ephelotis, Solomon Gambone, Mason Horwath, Daryl Jackson, Jordan Klein, Nick Lugerai, Miguel Venegas Ramirez, Sebastian Roy Seviroy, the Mr. Soccer, Simon Sawyer, Adriana Shoya, Amir Tuskalugu, Robert Wisser, and Michael Yatuma Jr. are the on the national side. We'll give you Ohio Elite here as we are officially underway. On this Saturday afternoon is we're pretty close to afternoon, Dan. We're right at noon, yeah, so eleven fifty-eight. So that's right. So uh, we'll look here now at Ohio Elite, who's in the all blue, blue kits, shirts, and shorts, going right to left on your screen. Jaqueen Beatty, Lucas De Alcone, Thomas De La Rosel, Brady Evans, Alexander Guerin, Brian Gorski, Tyson Hageman, William Henderson. Christopher Inderhis, Charlie, Charles uh, Ipshold Hording, Tyler Lamaccia, Maximilian Murphy, Julian Pavarini, Everett Rinaldi, Harrison Shineman, Bennett Tekovic, Adam Transier, and Landon Wagner are all on the roster for Ohio Elite. Is now here, opportunity for national soccer. That's number 12, shooting at that near post. That's Daryl Jackson. First time watching here on the Michigan Soccer Network. Hit that subscribe button, like us, and share us with your friends and family. We do encourage participation, so if you are stopping by, let us know where you're watching from, near and far. To all those watching in Ohio and Michigan and abroad, we appreciate your watching nonetheless. Looking up and down the roster for the home standing uh, Nationals, 0506. A lot of familiar faces. A lot of these players were at all state, all conference, all district, all region. A lot of these players will play in college in the next couple of years. We do have your latest Michigan Mr. Soccer winners, Sabalian Roy, nearby Clarkson High School. You know, he's had interest from Division I schools all over the country. A ball out wide. Down by the end line. Looks to put this one across. A good finish. save, a touch off the goal line and cleared That's away. So unable to get that one into the goal, but a great opportunity nonetheless. Go play, go play. 
So that one coming here in just the second minute. I believe that was opportunity there. It was number 77 who had that chance. Sebi Roy, who was right there, got a touch. Again, Sebi Roy is the reigning Mr. Soccer. Senior went to Clarkson High School. One of him and his dad are the only father-son duo in the history of Michigan High School Soccer Coaches Association history to win the award, father and son style. Travis Roy was your 1991 winner of the prestigious award. Went on to become an All-American at the University of Wisconsin. A little touch, top of the 18 for Ohio Elite. Again, the one thing we've been our common theme here today is just not being able to read their numbers. Not the player's fault. That was Everett Rinaldi who had a touch. Now here comes Adra Adriana Shoya. Troy Athens senior who won a state championship this team this year. A lot of state championship players on this field. You got uh, Venegas Ramirez. Milgo Ramirez was a member of Troy Athens. He had a great season this past year. In the early morning game, we had Daniel Kaju, another player from the uh, Nationals who suits up for Troy Athens in the high school season. I always find it interesting when players pick the larger, like 77, right? You know, you get into soccer, you know, I'm not saying you <laughs> don't like have those. It's like a football lineman number, it you know? It is, it is. It's this ball shifted out wide. It's going to be cut back down by the end line, and out comes the goalkeeper for the Nationals. Looks like Reed Dennis in goal for the Nationals. Starting goalkeeper for nearby Rochester Adams High School. That's right, Reed Dennis is the goalkeeper. Of course, Rochester Adams was a district champion this past fall. Back in 2022, they were the Division I state champs, so Back to back years, two local high schools have claimed the crown. It's division one's the big school division here in Michigan. Ball slotted back post. Good touch. Just past the goalkeeper. Open net. Just like that, the Nationals take a 1-0 lead. Good play, boys. So Robert Wisser getting the goal, assisted by Daryl Jackson. Robert Wisser plays at nearby Clarkson High School. His, his father was a, actually an All-Stater as well, much like Sabelli and Roy, his father Travis Roy. Uh, his father, Robert Sr., played on the west side of Michigan, rich in Gold Lake. Played a state championship game, I believe, in the early 1990s for the Blue Devils. And the first team All-State player there, played at Oak University. Just four miles down the road from where we're at right now at Auburn Hills Avondale. Northwest of Detroit. I'm just going to go off the assumption that the number one is also Jaqueline Betty is the goalkeeper for Ohio Elite. We weren't given the goalkeeper's positioning, so if you could if you could let us know. Um, if that's in fact the case, uh, we'd like to obviously, uh, you know, get the goalkeeper right. That's the one thing that we don't often get in these games is, is who is a player specifically for a team, what position they might play. So that'd be great if you could tell us. The uh, coaches for this team are uh, Zane Pollock for the Nationals. Whoa. Scott Severing is the head coach for the ECNL side for Ohio Elite. Amir Taskalogu. Oh, 
for the Nationals. Nationals 2010s, one last game, 2 nothing <laughs> over Ohio Elite. <laughs> Nationals are on the move again, three on two. Joseph Chico inside, slotted across towards <laughs> Sebi Roy. Can't get a touch on it to find the back of the net. That one's cleared away. Good. Oh my God. Appreciate you tuning in here today. I want to thank our partners as Granite City. The next five minutes are presented by Granite City Food and Brewery. Granite City Food and Brewery. Eat good eats, drink good drinks, have good times. You can visit their Troy location at I-75 and 16 Mile or their Northville location at 7 Mile and Haggerty. Made from scratch food. Brunch on Sundays from two to uh, sorry from nine to two p.m. Now Jackson makes his way up this near side. Jackson tries to cut back, and he'll take a spill as this one goes off for a goal kick. You can visit GCFB.com not only to learn more about Granite City Food and Brewery, but also to learn about caterings uh, as well uh, for if private parties on site or catered at your home or business location. Made from scratch food, great food, great drinks. Granite City Food and Brewery. Just 15 minutes away to the Troy location from where we're at at Auburn Hills Avondale. Assist was by number 20, by the way. Jordan Klein is what they're saying. Okay. Our spotters at home, we appreciate that. Is this one played up over top looking for Sevy Roy's? Out comes the goalkeeper for Ohio Lee. That's Jaqueen Beatty. As Roy gets the ball on the edge, cuts down by the end line, slots it back, cross the mouth of the goal. Is looking for Shoya. Didn't quite get there. Alfonso, we appreciate that, but no one gave us the phonetics for the names. So if you'd like to help us, we'd appreciate it. You want to put the phonetics in the comments section, we will pronounce their names as best we can, but we were not given phonetics. So the Nationals is swarming. High elite goal here, four nothing on shots, three nothing on frame. No corner kicks so far in the match, but the home standing Nationals do have a one nothing advantage over their colleagues from the Cincinnati Dayton area. Ohio elite. Yeah, comments are coming in. Someone mentioned about the mispronouncing a couple of the names. It's the first thing we said when we opened the broadcast. Hey, we don't we, we don't, get the rosters, we, we don't have we don't get pronunciations and, and instead of saying thank you, you have to make that comment. So these, these please, by all means, put the put the way you want this name pronounced in the comments. I will happily pronounce them the best we can. They, we were given these rosters literally right before the game. And uh, you know, the clubs had all week to provide the rosters with They've starters actually had and phonetics and everything three months, else. But, but yeah. you know, you know, so. But comment said 90% of the names were mispronounced, which means there's one or two. Done this a long time. Cut back by Roy. Now 
Nationals still in possession. Much like the morning game at the 08s, the Nationals have controlled play. Game two was the 07s. That was a very evenly matched game, and it ended in a one-to-one -one draw. The Nationals did win the first game, two-to-one. And then behind us to the west, there is a second field with some of the younger age group. Games are taking place. The 09s just finished their game. They won two to nil. So Nationals are two zero and one so far today. Long shot, that's going to be well wide. Out for a goal kick. It's Jackson finds Roy. It's a good opportunity shot right at the goalkeeper and a big save. Out for a corner. As I said, beginning the broadcast between all three games here on the main field at Auburn Hills Avondale, we've seen a lot of players that we are familiar with in terms of suiting up for their respective high schools during August through October. A lot of these players were all state last fall, or at the very least, all you know, league or all district. A lot of these players are definitely on the radar for colleges across the Midwest and across the country. So Shoya will take this corner kick for the Nationals. Good ball put in. It off the head of a Nationals player and then went out for what looks to be a throw-in. I'm not going to say goal kick. There's Churko that got ahead on that. Wasn't able to get it on frame. Still love to, to know the pronunciations if you know them. You know, that could have been, you know, Dan, that could have come in in a thousand different ways. You, you could have been like, hey, you know what? You guys need some help with your pronunciations. Instead, you have to do that. I, it just puts a bad taste in my mouth. Is this ball put up over the top looking for Roy. Can he get a touch on it? He does. Open net, and that one's in. 2 nothing. Good ball in over the top. Sebi Roy gets a touch on it, giving the Nationals a 2-0 lead here in the 16th minute. Breakaway feed is able to volley that up above the goalkeeper into the open net. 15-27 mark, and just like that, we got a 2-0 advantage for the Nationals. Six shot attempts, five on frame, two goals. Not a bad number to start a contest. This part of the match brought to you by FC Barcelona Camp. FC Barcelona Soccer Camp is coming this June 10th through June 14th, and Barca is coming to Legacy Sports Center in Brighton, Michigan. To learn more about FC Barcelona Camps or to register your son or daughter, go to camps.fcbarcelona.us, use promo code FCBMSN24, and get $30 off registration. Again, that's FCBMSN24. FC Barcelona Soccer Camps this June 10th through 14th at Legacy Sports Center in Brighton. Ball makes its way to Simon Sawyer. Ball up over the top. Not a bad ball. Out comes the goalkeeper. Roy was the intended target. Actually, no, Robert Wister was the intended target. Ball put into the seam and 
Right through traffic, Nationals defense holds strong. All played at the top by Amir. And right back to the Ohio League goalkeeper. In the last game, we had a chance to you know, connect with grandparents from Lexington, Kentucky, and Chicago. People watching their children and family from Cincinnati, Ohio. Where are you watching from here today? Where are you watching from today? And where might you be having lunch today? Where <laughs> we, we, we had discussions in the first two broadcasts about different restaurants here in the Detroit area, as long as where people are watching the games from, whether it be the Cincinnati, Dayton area, Chicago, Illinois, uh, Lexington, Kentucky, and anywhere beyond. We talked about the small burg of Lebanon, Ohio, southeast of Dayton there. There's always hidden gems. doesn't matter where you are in the country, what sport you are traveling for, spectator for. There's always great places to eat. Love to talk about those places in case we ever end up in a road trip in one of those locations. Always nice to know of a hidden gem. This ball played in. Still open, and then up comes Reed Dennis. Makes the grab. That ball played in by Alexander Guerin. So two nothing here, two goals in ten minutes, giving the Nationals a two nothing lead. Robert Whistler and Sebu Roy are your goal scorers. Be back at it here again tomorrow for three games on both fields. Six total games, 12 for the weekend. Ohio Premier comes into town. All those games we broadcast live here on the Michigan Soccer Network. We'll have four commentators tomorrow. We only have two available here today for these games on field one, but we'll have four commentators here tomorrow for all the games. This is ball played back to Reed Dennis. Simon Sawyer. Amir. That's Wisser. Ball out wide to Jackson. Jackson inside the 18. Ball on his left foot. Plays it inside for Shoya, and he'll miss it. Dan, you get the morning off tomorrow. We have a big big day tomorrow, but then we have a big night. we got the high school ranking show coming here tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's right. The Michigan High School Soccer Coaches Association is brought to you. Well, we'll bring that to you. The, the actual high school rankings, top 15 teams from each division here for the girls' spring season. Some, some, some upsets this week uh, around, uh, around the state of Michigan. Quite, we, quite a few. On all yeah. corners of Michigan, there were a few uh, surprising results but early in the season you know sometimes in, especially in these non-league games coaches will have a tendency to play a lot more players on their bench because it doesn't affect their conference standing so to speak and want to be able to give you know it's early in the season want to be able to give a lot of kids playing time a lot of different you know scenarios uh so you, they're still trying to feel out you know different combinations but but yeah in terms of results there were quite a few and really Especially in Division One and Division Two, there was a few that were like. Well. So talk about that tomorrow night, and excited to do that. Yes, I will be busy in the office tomorrow afternoon preparing for the show and working on some of the high school girls soccer previews. I've been working on here the last month or so. But today, the place to be is Auburn Hills Avondale High School here northwest of Detroit. East CNL all day, both fields. Shoya finds Amir. Amir into the 18. On his right foot, cuts it back to his left, and that one's blocked by the goalkeeper. 
Back to Shoya. Shoya's taken down, oh, and that's going to be a penalty. That's the easiest one, I think, of the day. As Shoya taken down and draws the penalty with a chance to go up 3-0 here in the 23rd minute. So Shoya with a chance to take the penalty that he earned. All-state first team player for Troy Athens in the fall at the PK spot. Takes the shot. What a save. Is diving to his right is Beatty. What a save. Not a lot of pace on that ball. The goalkeeper is able to make a save diving to his right to stop it right on the goal line. That have gone in it would have been a disaster because the visiting Ohio lead have yet to muster even a single shot attempt or a corner. They're already in a 2 nothing hole, so huge save to keep this game somewhat close. So, Dan, someone actually went onto our website and notified us through the website where they're watching from Bonita Springs, Florida is where they're watching the game from. So that's, that's so far the furthest and the warmest, uh, I think, that anyone's watching the game from here so far today. Uh, we've had people who've told us they're watching uh, from Turkey and from Israel. This is Paul put out wide on that far side. Look at this back across towards back. Poe, Shoya was there, but went over his head. Ball back to Jackson. Down by the end line. Coming to tackle. Ohio Lee, that's might have been a foul. It is. So here we are. It's 25th minute. Nationals up 2 0. As this part of the broadcast is brought to you by MSN Player Recruitment Videos. The Michigan Soccer Network recently launched our player recruitment highlight videos programs. Our programs are designed for every player's needs and budgets. Whether you are already have a video and want more exposure or need to start from scratch, the Michigan Soccer Network is ready to help you get to where you want to go. To learn more, visit michigansoccernetwork.com, select highlight videos, and start your journey with a click. Just over the halfway point here of half number one. And game number three. I mean, technically it's game number five on our sheet, but now Shoya settles it down. Shoya into the box. Out comes the goalkeeper, makes the save. Still close. Yeah. Packed crowd here today, this afternoon for this game. No 506 is there about to think 3,000 fans here, I think, is what we see here. <laughs> give or take. Give or take. Standing room only here at Digby Stadium. <laughs> All bundled up. Tomorrow they'll be in their shorts. 78 degrees expected tomorrow here in Michigan. On Monday it'll be 30. Isn't that right, Dan? Well, Michigan that's, weather it's that's what we call pure Michigan. I mean, <laughs> look, look at the last two weeks. We've had sleet, snow, multiple rainstorms. The wind's been out of sight. <laughs> and the temperatures have gone from the low 30s. And now we're going to be in the low 70s tomorrow. So that's what we can expect in the great state of Michigan. You know, down in the Ohio Valley, down the coast of southern Ohio, they may not see the uh, schizophrenic mood swings or weather swings as we do here in Michigan, surrounded by the Great Lakes. But... Anything and anything can happen when it comes to weather in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> anything is possible. That's no question about that. So, you know, I, it's one of those things where, you know, you just don't, you have to always have a jacket in your car. You know, you just, you just don't know. Also a blanket, you know, I always flip flops keep, and yeah. shorts as well. I guess kind of can go either way. I, I always mean, keep all kinds of stuff in the hatch of my, of my, uh, of my Jeep. <laughs> ball played in. Settle down. So, so far, dominating effort by the Nationals in the 0506 age group. 2 nothing over Ohio Lee as we get ready to enter the 28th minute of play. And the Nationals hold an 8 to nothing shots advantage, 6 to nothing on frame. And they do have the stat that counts the most, a 2 nothing. Edge here on the scoreboard. And they continue to control play throughout the uh, the pitch. 
So Roy looking for a mirror. And that is a foul. Not only on a Saturday, but a foul on Sunday as well. And a yellow card will be issued. That was Nick Lugeri. I mean, basically tackled him. That was a football tackle. That was uh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one slotted over to this near side. You That's know when you commit, you commit a foul like that right in front of the referee, and they're already pulling out their, uh, their card before they can even, you know, take another breath. You know it's coming. <laughs> it was 100% the right call. So, I yeah. mean, and I, I agree with the yellow card. So, you know, you, you spot on for a uh, second yellow card of the afternoon or the day here on field one. I can't speak for what's going on on field two. It's this ball being thrown in by Bennett Tekovic. Yeah, we do not have windows on the backside of the Ooh, press Oh, that one shot right off the near post. It got past Reed Dennis, but did not find the back of the net. So first shot attempt by Ohio League goes off the left goal post. The Nationals were able to clear the ball now on a counterattack. Two on two. And a good run up that far side. Cut back. Out comes Beatty and on Roy, but that one does not find its way past ben, uh, by a uh, past Beatty. Dan, I see uh, see some Rochester Adams uh, faithful here. You can see the Rochester Adams chairs <laughs> sitting up right there in front of us. You know, I, I, my guess is that's Reed Dennis's family. Is my guess yeah, just being that you know, they, you know he was a goalkeeper for Rochester Adams. Uh, yeah, right there, and you have to see that's right there in front of us. But the funny, no <laughs> the, the funny thing about that is that's that brown, gold, and black uniforms. Now you wear. They are like the worst colors they, ever. I right? mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Is this ball in from Ohio Elite and <laughs> Reed Dennis standing tall, doing what he does best, keeping the balls out of the back of the net. I just, I just don't like the color makeup. I just, I mean, just brown and yellow. Just, just you know. Now, I'm not saying that I don't like yellow or brown. I'm just saying together, <laughs> just doesn't seem like the right, the right color max. But, you know, now, I mean, red and gold. That's a great. Well, match I mean, I was, I was, I was going to reference the fact that you, you and I both went to different high schools in the Oakland Activity Association. Um, you know, you are a Troy Athens grad. I am a Rochester High grad. So I don't know if we've made friends or enemies down here with the Rochester Adams crew here to support a couple of Highlanders that suit up for the Nationals SC ECNL side. Yeah, no, but Reed Dennis is, is a phenomenal goalkeeper. Did a great job for Rochester Adams this past season. Get a step in, man, for you know a goalkeeper and John Coons, who, who you know obviously was chose to go to the Varder Academy last year, finish off his season, give him a chance to, to go play college soccer. So, but uh, hey, you know what? You know he's did a great job for them this season, and, and he's obviously doing a great job here for the Nationals in this one. And he plays this one long over that back line of Ohio Elite. That's Sebi Roy, the intended target. But one back by the Nationals now. Opportunity here for Miguel Ramirez. Now that's a shot right at the goalkeeper and Beatty. He clears that one off his goal line. Man, he is playing huge today on his own right. <laughs> he has single handedly kept him in this game. I mean, he made a save off the penalty kick from Shoya, and now another big save there off the goal line. He can't save them all if there's being peppered, but he's doing a fantastic job in goal. First corner kick opportunity for. I just hope that we're saying his name right because I don't know if it's Beatty is in goal or not. We were I'm just assuming that Beatty is the name of the goalkeeper. Is number one on the jersey. Is this one played in and cleared away? I did ask him some help from those watching from afar. I haven't heard any word yet if that's the goalkeeper in the between the pipes. Between the pipes is more of a hockey thing, right? I mean, I, I'm mean, between the posts, you know. I mean, between the woodwork. You know, I mean, because you say it in, in soccer. But here we are. We're in the 32nd minute. So just about 13 minutes to go here in this half. 2 nothing. your score. So if you are from Ohio Elite and you're watching, if you could tell us goalkeeper's name, that'd be great. Oh, this one's given away almost by Reed Dennis, but... A little sloppy play in the backfield by Nationals. 
It's 2 nothing. It's one of those things where, you know, uh, we talk about this all the time in a 2 nothing game, Dan, is that, you know, the pressure really isn't on Ohio Lee. It's on the Nationals right now to be able to find a way, you know, to, to get another one. They had a chance with the PK. They had a chance, obviously, there with that one from Ramirez. But it, they're a dangerous lead to protect a two-goal lead because sometimes you have a tendency to let your guard down slightly. You feel comfortable. You make a crucial mistake in the final third of the field. The other team scores. And all of a sudden, that magical momentum word of the sport, Swiss, changes directions. And all of a sudden, you're on your heels trying to protect a one-goal lead instead of a two-goal lead, and the other team is coming at you all waves. So that could have been a crucial mistake. The Nationals avoided danger that time, but... DeRusso is dragged down. He, they're saying it's outside the box. He looked clearly in. Now he's pulling into the spot. Yeah. So now here is a penalty shot now on the other side of the field where Reed Dennis has to face off against an Ohio, Ohio elite attacker. Yeah, he was definitely a stride inside the box and was given a complete hip check, knocked him down as he was trying to dribble the ball towards the net. And now... So this is going to be Thomas DeRussell, number seven for Ohio Lee. He's facing off against Reed Dennis. Steps up, and just like that, Reed Dennis comes up big. Collects the rebound. Reed Dennis is slow to get up, but what a save from him. Both goalkeepers have made PK saves in this one. And that's a big moment for Reed Dennis as the Nationals the last couple minutes have allowed the Ohio Elite to get some things going. And that right there is a huge momentum swing here for the Nationals. Yeah, great dive to his right. I mean, again, we talked about the momentum was starting to switch a little bit. If that goal would have gone in or the shot would have gone in, it could have been a whole new ball game. But Reed Dennis in a six foot four frame coming through in the clutch for the Nationals to keep this a two goal advantage. We are now in the 35th minute, seconds away from the 36th minute, and the Nationals are still up two goals. So we have the last name. It's Joaquin, by the way. So Joaquin Phoenix. So that, that, let's say that's what the thank you, uh, Eric Beatty, uh, Beatty. We appreciate that. We uh, hey, talk, talk, talk. wanted to make sure we got that name right. So Beatty is in goal. Joaquin Beatty is in goal. Good, good. So we do appreciate you letting us know. So it's still two nothing here. I mean, two big saves from goalkeepers on both sides. Joaquin Beatty. Making a big save on a PK against Adrian, Adrian Ashoya back here a few minutes ago. And then another one from Dennis Re, uh, Reed Dennis making a huge save on the penalty shot. Again. Another opportunity here now is just one played in towards the middle and that cleared ball. away. Try something. And a shot through traffic from Jordan Klein. Klein signed with Western Michigan University here earlier in the school year. Of course, the Broncos of Western Michigan have reached the NCAA Division I Sweet 16 the last two years, and Klein is part of another great class that Chad Wiseman will bring in here next August. A lot of the very best high school and MLS Next Academy players from Michigan have signed on to play for the Broncos, so they'll be a little bit younger team in the fall, but they will still be a strong side. Some very good recruits coming in to the Kalamazoo area. Up that far side, here come the Nationals. Cut back. Foul called. It's 12.34 here in Michigan. Eastern Standard Time, we're at Dick By Stadium in Auburn Hills, Michigan, Auburn Hills Avondale High School. Where the Yellow Jackets they call themselves here. They play 
in the Oakland Eth. Activities. Thank you. Activities Association, <laughs> OAA. Uh, in the white division, both girls and boys soccer. Settled down by Klein. Looks over here on this near side to Ramirez. I believe they actually were in the blue division this school year, but that changes every every couple of years. Yeah. Uh, that's right. You know, well, it depends. It doesn't always change. So, so there are now four divisions. Um, I believe the girls' side is in the blue, right? Yes, and then the and the boys' side is in the white. Or are they still in the blue? Are they both in blue? Yeah, actually, they won the they won the yeah, blue I was on say the boys' side yeah. last fall. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I was here when they uh, first opened this field. I think it was 2012. They hosted a Division II state semifinal here. Auburn Hills, Avondale beat Bloomfield Hills and over. And then Avondale went on. That year, they actually won the uh, Division II state championship. The only time they won uh, a state title in boys or girls soccer. And then Bloomfield Hills, Andover closed in 2012, didn't they? And then became they became Bloomfield High School. 13 Andover and Lazar merged. Yeah, They're actually in the Bluefield. old. They redid the Andover building and they merged schools. Yep. So the old Lazar building is now in middle school. Yep. And that's just a few miles away. You can get there in less than 10 minutes to the old Lazar High School. I think it's actually less than 10 minutes. It's got to be like six. It's not that far from here. Just no, it's, it's yeah. like three or four miles away, yeah. Looking for Roy, but intercepted by Ohio Elite. Going to call Handling. So Handling called. So a free kick coming up here for the Nationals. That one about we are now 41 yards from goal. No. 42. And we are now in the 40th minute of play here in the first half. Cut back. So it's number 26 on that. Sebi Roy. Ball inside. Lose your eye was the one that played it. I don't have a 26 on our roster, but I see a 26 out there, Dan. Just curious if anyone at home who's watching this can tell us that there's a number 26 on the Nationals. Who that might be, that'd be helpful. Maybe I'm reading the number wrong. It's definitely possible. So, uh... Joaquin is uh, first team All State and All Great Lakes Midwest Region Top 20 goalkeeper. Proud Papa, says Eric Beatty. So we appreciate that. He's a fantastic goalkeeper. We've seen him play huge, making some huge saves. So the fact he's a top 20 goalkeeper is, is, is holds true based on how he's playing. Now, Steady Roy. Down by the end line. Looks like he cut this one back. He does. And this one will end up going out and out for the corner. We talked about Jordan Klein nearby Utica. He's now signed with Western Michigan. So one of two dream team players in Michigan to play in this game, along with Sabellian Roy, who was your Mr. Soccer. But curious to know, um, considering most of these kids are high school seniors and a couple are juniors, in the comments section, let us know how many of these kids have made an oral commitment or signed the letter of intent to play at different levels of collegiate soccer. Ball comes in low towards Lose Your Eye. We'll play it back. That's got to be offside. Oh, it yeah, is. he's about 10 yards off. <laughs> 40 second minute, still 2 nothing. Nationals over the Ohio Elite here in the 05 06 division. Ohio Valley Conference of the Elite Clubs National League. And we're proud to be a partner here for the the weekend at Auburn Hills Avenue High School broadcasting six games today on simultaneously on two separate turf fields and then back here tomorrow with an extended crew to do six more contests. Ball over the top it was offsides as well so a couple offsides calls for the last couple moments for both teams. Oh, 
Ball played short. Amir. That was Klein. Now looking back for Amir. We won back by the Nationals. Ramirez tried to get a good touch, but couldn't. Getting towards the business end of this first half. We'll step aside here at the halftime break, get you some commercials. We'll be back here on the other side. And if you are in town for one of the Ohio Elite games, for a place to have some lunch or for dinner. Just 15 minutes away is the Granite City. Two locations in the Detroit area, Troy and Northfield. The Troy location is just 15 minutes southeast of here on I-75, not even 15 minutes away, 10 minutes away. It's all freeway. Yep. Right off, the, right off the Big Beaver exit, 16 mile. Exit number 69 is the exit. Rochester Road is 67, which we didn't know yes. that day. Yeah, so. <laughs> I think Crooks is 70. So. Love it! Adam's 71. Maybe 72. <laughs> Another opportunity here for Nationals. That's right. That's Nicholas. Puts it, slots it back post. Goes back up and over the defender of Ohio Elite and Beatty was right there, so it didn't matter. It was a foul. Joaquin Beatty of the Ohio Leap, very active in patrolling the penalty box. He's made a couple great saves, including a penalty kick. He's been snaring crosses, a couple restarts. Yes. Highly athletic, as we were told. He's a top 20 Well, uh, That's a foul, and that's prospect. gotta be a yellow card, I would imagine. Yeah, here comes the card. Number 50, that's Tyler Lamachia. Lamachia, given the yellow card. I mean, it's a clear foul. I mean, Amir tried dribbling through traffic through two players, and in comes Lamachia. Right call. So Joaquin committed to DePaul. Chose school with highest rank for his degree instead of best soccer team. Had D1 offers. Uh, I mean, that's good. I mean, I, I, that's a great you know that's a great thing about about sports, right? It gives you options, especially if you're at the higher levels. But we'll we'll finish that thought when we come back here from our halftime break. Uh, but Dan, it's two nothing here in favor of the Nationals. Hey, there have been opportunities on both sides to extend the lead or to get back in this one, and goalkeeping on both sides has been superb. Yeah, stellar would be the correct word. It's been both goalkeepers have made a clutch save off a penalty kick. Both have dove their left and right to snare other opportunities away. But at, at the half, we have the Nationals 0506 up on top over there. Colleagues from the Cincinnati area, Ohio Elite, 2-0. And as, as we're getting close to the end of our day, day one of this. The home stretch is, yeah. uh, the home stretch <laughs> is in, is what we're currently doing with right now. But it's 2 nothing here at the half. 45 minutes to go. Will Ohio Elite find a way back in this one? Or will National Soccer take over? We'll find out. 45 minutes to go.
MichiganSoccerNetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a cut. Now Morrell has a good cutback from him. He'll fire one, and that's going to go in! Submitted 15 to 30 clips that will be put into a three to seven minute long video. Video review of your huddle, VO, or other platforms that you might have video on, as well as for an additional charge, MSN can come out and film games for you to create those clips. Our coach evaluation process, which is also an additional charge, where we have college coaches from various levels across the United States that will review your game film and provide feedback on how to improve that film, as well as also evaluating your play and what you can improve on. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the MichiganSoccerNetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Our mission is to help players take their game to the next level and reach their potential. Not only do we help develop fundamental technical skills such as ball control in tight spaces with different surfaces, dribbling at speed and changing direction, using a variety of 1v1 skills to create space, receiving on a half turn, hook turn, and out of the air, finishing off the dribbling, one touch, volleys, and headers. We help players get comfortable performing these skills at game speed with pressure and with both their dominant and non-dominant foot. In addition, we help players with their speed of play, awareness of space, defenders and teammates, and also dominate with our off the ball movement. We offer a variety of services such as one-on-ones, small groups, large groups, as well as team sessions. We have an experienced coaching staff that is professional, friendly, patient, while still holding players to high standards and holding them accountable. 
No matter what level you're at as a player, I'm confident we can help you get better. Over the past three years, we've built one of the best soccer-specific training facilities in the country and developed one of the most detail-oriented programs to help out players. Visit our website. And welcome back here into Dick By Stadium in Auburn Hills, Michigan for this ECNL Ohio Valley Boys Soccer Matchup. It's Soccer Weekend here on the Michigan Soccer Network. Dan Stickrad, Jonathan Turner. It's 2-0 here in favor of the National Soccer Club. Sevy Roy and Robert Wisser got the Nationals on the board. And, uh, I mean, Ohio Elite had opportunities. They had a penalty shot of their own, as well as did the Nationals. But either way... 45 minutes to go. And we'll have a Nationals win or a comeback from behind for Ohio Elite. Either way, we are just moments away here from the start of this second half. And Dan, uh, what, do you, what do you think I got in store here this, uh, this second half? Well, both goalkeepers have proven me, you know, worthy. I mean, they both made some great saves, both stopped the penalty kick. Very athletic, very active in patrolling the box. And uh, the Nationals were able to convert twice early in the match, but I don't think it's going to be an easy task to beat these goalkeepers. So the chances have been there for the Nationals. They have, they have controlled play and dominated the stat columns. But, you know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be comfortable with a 2-0 lead. I mean, as you should never be in the, in the sport of soccer. Because you, you give up one goal and the momentum can switch on a dime and next you know you're in a you're in a two to two tie or you're down a goal because you gave up three uh, three chances. I mean there hasn't I mean Ohio has not had that many attempts in this game. They had three shots and two on frame in the first half and have not to have a corner yet, but that doesn't mean they won't be able to generate an attack here in the second half. Back underway here from Dick By Stadium. Again, 2 0 here in favor of the Nationals. Nationals now going right to left on your screen. They're in the white and blue kits. And Ohio Elite in the blue, all blue, but light blue and dark blue shorts. Now going left to right. That's Jordan Klein. He'll put this one into the seam. He's looking for number seven, Solomon Gambone, Gambine. Some Gambone, apologize. Is this one thrown back in? It looks like we might have a goalkeeper change. Or is that the same goalkeeper? For, I mean, Reed Dennis is still in net. But I meant for Ohio Elite Dan. Yeah, it looks like they have made a change. Yeah, it looks that way. What? Problem is now I, do, I definitely don't know who that is. <laughs> before we could kind of get gas, and now now we can't. But you know, right before the halftime break, you know, they were talking about how he chose uh, how uh, Joaquin Beatty had chose you know a higher uh, a higher school for his uh, education than for athletics. And you know, it's something when hey, when you're a good athlete, you you, you have choices. When you're a, a top tier athlete. Uh, you have choices. You can make the, the, the choice and go play for uh, a school based on their athletic program. Uh, you could also make one uh, for their educational component. And, you know, it, it just goes to show that I think that sometimes two athletes have to have to make have to make the realization where, whether or not where are they going to go. You know, not, not just from the standpoint of college, but I think a lot of players are looking as that's a good ball into the scene there. One back by the Nationals. But I, I think... Uh, the real, the reality of playing at the at the next level after college, while it is higher than it was 25 years ago, 
right? There wasn't a, there weren't options 25 years ago. You, if you were playing college, it was the MLS. Now there's USL Championship. Now there's MLS Next Pro. Now there also is obviously uh, NISA, and you can argue about whether or not NISA is professional or not. But that's that's a whole other debate that we can have another day, Dan. There are options to play at the next level, right. you know. So you don't have to go to the best schools in the world in order to give yourself the opportunity and the platform to play at the next level. Playing on a USL two team during the summer, uh, or a Midwest Premier League team, or UPSL team, if you get if you get yourself on tape and you're playing at a high level, and you're playing at a good college and playing good college athletics, you can really go anywhere. I mean, look at Steve and Steve Clark, for example, who played for at that time. It wasn't the Horizon League. Uh, they were playing. They, they were a, called the Pine. Well, they were called. A, it was a Summit League. Yeah. Division one college, but you know, not as big as the Horizon League and. You know, he went to Mason High School near, uh, you know, it's just 10, 12 miles south but of Lansing, a, Michigan. For example, he's played many, many years in the MLS. I mean, yeah. he plays now for the Houston Dynamo. He, he's had a very successful career professionally. And uh, it just goes to show you don't, if you, if you still want to go that path, it can be done going through a smaller school if your focus is on education. And I think that's an important thing, especially in today's world, because I think a lot of athletes are like, well, I got to go, I go play in Michigan, I go play in Indiana, I go play at Stanford, you know, these big name, big schools that have great soccer programs in order to get to that level. And that's not the case at all. And we talked about, you know, Joaquin Beatty of the Ohio Elite. We were Look at that it. shot from oh. Sebi Roy. My goodness. Sebi Roy with a left-footed banger gets past the goalkeeper. 3 nothing. Absolute brilliant strike from near the 18. Left no doubt. Second goal of the match for Mr. Roy. And now the Nationals are starting to distance themselves from their colleagues from Ohio Elite. 3 nothing here. 50th minute. Just turned and shot, did Sebi Roy. And just like that, he's got a brace here on the afternoon. I believe that was unassisted. The first two goals, I both came off, I believe, a pass from Jordan Klein, head of Western Michigan University. But we were talking about, you know, the college recruiting scene before that Sebi Roy goal. Uh, you know, you look at the men's soccer side, collegially, you know, there's far more Division One programs for the women than there are for the men. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with playing at Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA level because you still see some very good teams and players at those levels. And you do see some of those players kind of rising through the ranks not necessarily have to go to a power five conference school, but you know, the goalkeeper for the Ohio Elite's going to the, you know, the first half. Joaquin Beatty is going to DePaul. I believe they're still in the Big East. It's a power conference school. Top six conference. So he's gonna play in a, in a good conference and get a great education at DePaul. In uh, De it's called DePaul. Oh, he's at not, DePaul. Not DePaul, but DePaul. DePaul, Indiana. Yeah. Okay, sorry. No, it's okay. Stand corrected. A good turn is this one. And a foul is called. It's called on number 22, Chirko. Actually, not. Yeah, it was. It was Chirko. This part of the match is brought to you by Julia Zahn Real Estate. The real estate market can be messy and confusing. When to buy, when to sell, home inspections, appraisals, and so much more. All of it. You are looking to, whether you're looking to buy or sell, you can text or call Julia Zahn, 248-422-2562. Again, that's Julia Zahn Real Estate, 248-422-2562. She's your real estate advisor you can trust. Now ball seemed through to Jackson. The flag does go up. Another offsides. Nice through ball into him. Just unfortunately, he mistimed his run and offsides is called. I think we made it, man. We, we got to the last half of our sixth and final game here on this Saturday. Simultaneously, two games happening all at once. We'll do this all over again here tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have four broadcasters in total here in the press box. I think we're going to go up top. I think we're going to, you know, the game's going to be 78 degrees tomorrow. Why not move, uh, we'll have our crew up, our uh, other crew up top tomorrow calling their matches. 
Some tables and chairs up there. It's going to be 78 degrees tomorrow. Why not, man? Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> just hopefully they tomorrow they can... I, again, I just I always find we talk, we joke around a bit, but they should have they should have put the two forty minute halves to go first, you know. But I understand there's a forty five minute you know half here in this one. There's a forty five minute those these age groups have to do that. But so maybe hindsight being twenty twenty, they just made this game a twelve o'clock start. <laughs> you know, you're not gonna get all the games off on time. You know, but uh, but either way. First time stopping by, hit that subscribe button, like us, and share us on Facebook and Twitter and Twitch and you know, LinkedIn and, and everywhere else, X, whatever you want to call it, TikTok, MI Soccer Network. Make sure you head over to michigansoccernetwork.com for more MSN news, all soccer updates throughout the state of Michigan. We put out three and four news articles each and every day. Your prep roundup happens every day as well. Detroit City FC fan, USL Championship. We do a Detroit City FC recap show each and every week here on the Michigan Soccer Network. No USL Championship game this week for the uh, for the uh, Detroit City FC. They have a, a bye week as they take on Michigan Stars in the US Open Cup third round on Tuesday. We'll try and recap that here next week along with the rest of our recap as we get back underway. That game is down in Hamtramck, Michigan, inside Detroit, Key War Stadium, historic Key War Stadium. That it is, is one back. That's Klein. Klein through traffic. Foul called. Cool, the cool, two of the coolest places to watch a soccer match are historic stadiums in Michigan. You got Key War down in Hamtramck, and you got the Atwood Stadium just north of downtown Flint. Two great places to watch games. Joe, every time I go to those stadiums to watch. See, Atwood Stadium, well, I, I'm not disagreeing with you that it's it's just, because it's not a soccer-specific field. No. It just, it for me, it just doesn't carry the same, the same, you know, um, same weight as, as Keyword. Now, Keyword did not always used to be uh, a soccer-specific, but they've done some great work there, Detroit City FC, and and really making sure that they've done a good job of, of making that, that stadium the best it can be based on its location. You know, I think if, if you were to ask, that's one thing that we talk, we've, we've tried to get more games there as far as, uh, you know, broadcasting, but also bringing in, in high-level games. And, you know, the biggest, the biggest hurdle of, of Keyworth is it just doesn't have all the uh, amenities that a lot of your professional players would want to have in a stadium. You know, you don't have the right. glorious locker rooms with, you know, all, all the, the different things that you'd want. I mean, we, we've we gone to a lot of stadiums, Dan. We've been to Leesburg, Virginia, where, you know, Loudoun <laughs> United plays their home games, and we've seen their facilities. We, I've been out to out to Orange County um, FC, where, you know, they, they have, they call their home in Irvine, California. And, you know, just, we've been to all these different stadiums, and, and they all they all have a number of great Great attributes, but you know the the amenities, the uh, you know the weight room on site, or you know the club level this or locker room that. Players oftentimes like those kind of things. This ball up top for show you, show you here near side looks to cut it inside, looks to switch this over to that far side of Jackson. Just too much pace. Is uh, Mike Guerin says Ohio's new goalie is C.J. Inderhess. So we appreciate you letting us know. Inder Hess is now in goal. And he is number 98. So Christopher Inder Hess is the goalkeeper. Never would have known that based on the number. It was easy with Beatty because one. <laughs> You know, most goalkeepers, I mean, again, growing up, it was one, it was zero, it was double zero. Ball put across for Shoya. Shoya brings it down on his chest, on his right foot. Tried to back heel it, just loses it. It was so much easier back then, Dan. Now, no one wants to wear zero or double zero. They want to wear numbers like 98, you know. And now Shoya takes the ball. Puts it inside for Roy. Roy looking to get the hat trick. He does. Yeah. 
just like that here in the 58th, Sebi Roy gets his third goal of the day. I believe that was assisted by Shoya. So Roy with the hat trick, Shoya with it a goal. Robert Whistle goal, Jordan Klein with two assists. There's this all-star roster for Nationals SC in the 05-06 division of ECNL. Comfortably now, four to nothing over the Ohio Elite, who have yet to attempt a shot here in the second half. Unlike the high school game, there are no mercies in these games, so these games will be complete in their entirety. We are just about 31 minutes away from the conclusion of this game. And, you know, realistically, again, we, we talked about this, you know, execution is, is, is something we always, something we always talk about here on these broadcasts, Dan, is, you know, not every team is going to have, you know, 13 or 14 opportunities in a game. It's what you do with the opportunities that you do have. And, uh, you know, the Nationals have had a, a lot of opportunities in this game. They've had some big saves from Beatty in the first half. They had a missed PK. So with their opportunities, they find a way to score four goals. Uh, maybe I, you could probably argue with, oh, look at this ball in for Roy. Now is Roy with an open net looking to make his fourth goal as this one's pushed aside by Inderhas and out for a corner. But just again, execution-wise, you know, the goal, the goal obviously is to put ones in the back of the net. This will be brought in. I believe it's Shoya. Ball in towards middle of the 18. That was just the second quarter of the match for the Nationals. Second overall between both teams. Unlike that first game we saw at 8 o'clock this morning. Oh, the, good uh, work, the Amir. They had 13 corner kicks to the Nationals. Amir had tried to put that one central, and it was broken up on its way towards. Middle of the goal, and that one's cleared out and out for a corner. That was Solomon and Gambone. As the game behind us just comes to an end. Option, option. Don't know the final score of this one. That's a shot from Shoya that goes up and over, just sells up. 14th shot attempt overall on the, on the afternoon for the Nationals 05 06. 14 to 3 on total shots. And <laughs> 11 to 2 with shots on frame. and. Nationals have the only three corners of this match. As we enter the 62nd minute of play, the Nationals up comfortably four to nil. And this is the final game of the morning slash afternoon. The fifth game finished behind us. Now the sixth game is still 28 minutes away from its completion. This next part of the match is brought to you by the Michigan Goalkeeper Academy. Take your goalkeeping to the next level. Register for the Michigan Goalkeeper Academy camps this summer by visiting michigangoalkeeperacademy.com to learn more about their programs, their individual training, and camps. michigangoalkeeperacademy.com today. Dan, did you know that I went to camp at Michigan Goalkeeper Academy back in the day? Did you? It's the longest running goalkeeper camp in the state of Michigan. I think over 40 years. That's incredible in its own right. I Michigan, mean, I mean, it was originally started by a gentleman named Mark Hamilton. Yes, Mark and then, Hamilton. And then recently no. Trevor Foster took over the reins of, of the uh, the camps and has taken over for Mark Hamilton. And yes, I, I participated in those camps back when I was a kid. And I learned that, hey, that's the foundation of goalkeeping. Mark okay. Hamilton was a uh, late 1970s graduate of Rochester High School before they had high school soccer. He played his collegiate days at Oakland University when they were a Division II school. 
and he's been involved with the... Back when they were the Pioneers, right? Yeah, they, he's been involved with the club circuit for a long time. That's a good look right there. You can see Jackson making that run on that far side. Just couldn't get the ball to him. Good physical, and now they're going to call a foul. Well, Ohio Elite will have a free kick here, about 40 yards from goal. Reminder, highlights from this game, along with all the other games, will be available here on our YouTube channel here later this weekend. The 2011 matchup will be available here later this afternoon as well. So keep an eye out for that one if you want to watch that broadcast. As in comes the ball, and Reed Dennis makes the save. Well, it was Reed Dennis' save on a penalty kick midway through that first half, who kept the momentum from completely shifting towards the Ohio Elite side. Had they scored, that would have been a two to one game at the point, but Dennis made an incredible save, and then the, the Nationals have some, you know, continued to pour it on. Control play outshot them by a wide margin, and now they are up four to nothing as we get ready to enter the 65th minute of play here in the second half. Sebi Roy of nearby Clarkson High School, your 2023 Michigan Mr. Soccer winner. It's netted the hat trick. And here he comes now, plays his ball inside for Shoya. Shoya cuts back, lays it off, and that went up and over. A good look there from Cherko, just couldn't get it on frame. So there's some more soccer games happening here after this one. Don't know what teams or league, but uh, they are going to have some additional soccer here taking place after this. We're heading to Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have not really eaten a meal yet today. I am, I am ready. I am starving. Some. Good news, Dan. I didn't tell you this yesterday, but uh, you know, I, for those of you who don't don't know, I was recently diagnosed with type two diabetes, and, and uh, back in January, oh, this one deflects off of the Ohio Elite attacker. My A one C when I was checked back in January was ten point five. Uh, the average is you got to be five point seven and below. Is where you, normal is between four point four and five point six, five point seven. That's the normal ranges for your A one C. That's that's the amount of sugar or insulin. And sugar in your in your blood. That's again keeping in mind that sugar should not shouldn't be a ton of sugar in your blood. But that's what diabetic diabetes is all about. But anyways, Dan, uh, I had my my check uh, on Wednesday. My blood worked on, and my uh, my A one C is now at five point seven. So I've been able to get it down from ten point five to five point seven. So I'm uh, I'm feeling feeling much good, better, Lo looking good. Down to around two hundred pounds. You mentioned uh, earlier. One hundred ninety five. I was two thirty three back in January. So I've just lost. Just under 36 pounds, something like that. So just in the last two months. So so when I say I'm hungry, I really am truly hungry. <laughs> <laughs> is this today a cheat day or no? <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, my cheat day is typically the day I inject myself. I take, uh, I take a medic an injectable medicine uh, every, well, once a week. And uh, that's usually on Tuesdays. But... Um, I've given up uh, all sugars. I have not had a uh, significant carb um, in some time. So um, I miss my bowl of pastas. I miss my Jersey Mike subs. You know, I miss, uh, I miss just basically anything that would have a, a carb in it. You know, no bread and butter, you know, toast. Just, uh, you don't realize, Dan, how, how much stuff that you just can't eat. <laughs> until, well, you know, the hard thing is, like you mentioned pasta, like I love spaghetti and the varied types of pasta ravioli you name it yep there is just there is sugar in in, in those noodles there is sugar well, it's not in that sugar. tomato it's sauce just the carbohydrates turn into sugar yeah, yeah. in your body but it, yeah it's just not all carbohydrates there are certain <laughs> carbohydrates that don't but those are the carbohydrates that do and um but uh but yeah so it's uh 
you know, it, it's it's a new process for me. And uh, but either way, um, so when we talk about food, uh, when I get, we go Buffalo Wild Wings, I'm gonna have to tone it down a little bit. I can't get what I know to get or haven't. I actually been to Buffalo Wild Wings since I was diagnosed. To be fair. But yeah, I mean, uh, no pop. You know, I, I don't drink pop anymore. I, you don't think about, you don't realize it until you're until you are in that spot where you have to start making these decisions, these choices. You know, I used to drink pop a lot. I used to drink coffee with you know a lot of sugar in that coffee. Uh, obviously, I have to do everything now is sugar free, um, sugar free everything, and um, it's just it's a new lifestyle. But uh, I feel great. And uh, I feel uh, I feel healthy. My message to all, and again, I'm a, I'm a man, so I'm a, I can say this. But my message to all men, because I think we're guilty of this, and I'll continue to say this. You know, as long as I, uh, you know, I, this is now a lifelong journey for me. Is just don't take, you know, don't don't not go see your doctor every year. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's something I think us men might struggle with. Is this ball played in by Shoya, a little back heel. goes back post for Sebi Roy. He'll take a shot, fires it, goal number four. <laughs> So just like that, it's 5 nothing. Scooped up a loose ball about 25 yards straight out from the net. He turned and fired that inside the left post. Again, this has officially been claimed to Seb Bally and Roy Day as he's had four straight goals after teammate Robert Wister gave him one nothing lead. At this, now at the 69th minute mark, the Nationals are well on their way claiming a victory here at Auburn Hills Avondale. They have conceded only four shot attempts, three on frame, and are up very comfortably 5 nothing. here as we get ready to enter the final 21 minutes of this match. So ball settles down. There's Shineman. Or Sabellian Roy, very high grade point average. Was I know earlier in the school year he was talking to some high level educational schools like Ivy League schools, and uh, not heard if he's made an oral commitment yet. But we'll definitely see him on the soccer pitch in the future. Very talented young man. Spent his first two years of high school playing for FC Cincinnati in the MLS Next Circles, and came back home and has been at Clarkson High School the last two years playing with. His age group at the Nationals, the ECNL level. Everywhere he goes, he is an absolute standout. That he is, is. So we're in the 71st minute. So there's about 19 minutes to go in this one. Five nothing, your score. Ball looking towards Sebi Roy. A little too much pace on that. Nationals have this one in hand. They lead 5-0. Two goals in the first half and three here in the second. Appreciate you tuning in here on this Saturday afternoon. Be back at it here tomorrow as the Nationals take on the Ohio Premier side from Dublin, Ohio. Tomorrow, 9, 11, and 1 are your games. Today they were at 8, 9.45, and 11.30. As Chicken Mouse asks, what's your least favorite vegetable? <laughs> well, I don't know if I have a, I mean, there's just vegetables I just won't eat. Like, I won't eat Brussels sprouts. It's, I don't know if Brussels sprouts considered a vegetable. I'm assuming that they are. But, um, you know, I, 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 I mean, I can't eat corn because corn, you know, obviously is sugar. Right, so uh, I can't I can't eat can't eat corn, so I probably put that there. Now I used to really enjoy corn, to be fair, um, but uh, I I love carrots, I love asparagus, I love green beans, uh, broccoli, especially a good buttered broccoli. Yeah, you know, uh, like like, you like know. a butter and a cheese sauce, or, uh, yeah. broccoli or or in a cheese sauce. So. Yep, yep. For me, I know, and some people actually call it a fruit, but I always consider it a vegetable. I cannot stand tomatoes, which is ironic because. I love spaghetti. I love even spaghetti little, even sauce, like a little cherry tomato dipping in ranch. You know, a little like cherry tomato. tomatoes. It's cold and slimy and just bitter, nasty. That's just me. Uh, I love cucumbers. Okay. Call cucumbers. me strange, but I just do not like tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. 
No, I'm not a big tomato. I mean, it depends, right? I think that you know the you know I like fried green tomatoes. I haven't had those in a bit, uh, but uh, those aren't those aren't terrible. Um, especially when you get them like in, down south, like in Alabama and Tennessee, where they just know how to make them. You know, uh, yeah, they're famous for them, like Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana. Yeah. You start area, getting yeah. them down there. That's 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 new. You know what I mean? So. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I don't mind. I mean, I like tomatoes. I mean, I'm not a big tomato fan, uh, but I I do like tomatoes in in certain circumstances, you know. So so nationals won that. The, so the 2009s won five to one uh, in that last game over Ohio Elite um, 09. So so far here today, it's been a clean. Well, it's. Nationals. Five wins, one tie. Well, yeah. four wins, one tie with one still going, with it being 5 nothing. It's a safe uh, bet. player the down. Nationals. So the player goes down here for Ohio Elite. You see him go down. Was that on the play, or is that just uh, He just he pulled up. Oh. Looks like it was number 19. That's uh, Alexander Guerin. Just kind of pulled up there a little bit, so... Again, it's just there's it's just so hard to see their numbers. I just I feel bad that we just can't say more of these guys' names. I mean, I can see them when they're right here in the near touch line, near the press yeah. box. But on the other side of the field, I mean, even with binoculars, I can't even read these numbers. They're 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 a, a kind of a shade of blue on a, I don't know, like a sky blue, turquoise blue jerseys. But the the numbers are kind of faint where you can't read them unless you're almost on top of them. Seventy-fifth minute here, the final match of this six-game extravaganza here at Auburn Hills Avondale High School, northwest of Detroit. 0506 division of the Elite Clubs National League, Ohio Valley Division. And it's been all nationals SC in this match. 5-0 as we get entered the final 16 minutes of this contest. The Nationals have dominated throughout. That was a touch, but that now. Opportunity here as out comes Reed Dennis. An open goal, and that one's going to go in, but the flag does go up. Offsides is called, and that will nullify the goal. And Nationals holding a 16 to 4 shots edge, and 12 to 3 on frame. We've got the game's only three corner kicks, and they have dominated on the scoreboard as well. 5 nothing. We are now in the 76th minute of action. That goal is called back. There was an offsides flag that went up. The Nationals have been substituting freely here in the last 10 minutes of this match as it is comfortable in the lead. And we'll, the Michigan Soccer Network is the hub. We'll be back here tomorrow for six more games. Featuring different age groups of the National Soccer Club. They'll be playing the Ohio Premier, I believe, out of the Cleveland area. Dublin, Ohio. But this part of the match is oh, brought to you by Evolution Soccer. Columbus, Ohio area. My, my Build and perfect your skills and elevate your game to a new level. Book your sessions today at evolutionperformancetraining.com or call 248 795 Five two nine one. That's two four eight seven nine five five two nine one, or visit Evolution Performance Training. dot com. Dublin, Ohio, and on the north west side of the Columbus area. I said Cleveland by mistake. Um, been in Dublin many times in my life. Went to my cousin's wedding in Dublin. This one slotted in, and that's goal number six. And there's Salmon Gambone, number seven. That. Put that one home, and it's six nothing. So just like that, six nothing, and Ohio will lead. I didn't take anything positive about this. A goal would do that. I mean, you know, you, hey, you, you battled, and this game was close in the first half, and you had an opportunity to, to pull one back on that penalty shot that Reed Dennis made a save on back in that first half. 
they've had a couple opportunities, and, and, and you know, Reed Dennis has come up big in those moments. But a positive here with the Kamada here. Go, go get a goal and, and, and use that to kind of help you build for the next time. So Nico Demopoulos is the one that got the assist, number 14, for the Nationals. <laughs> Nationals up 6-0 here as we enter the 79th minute of play. Game well in hand. They now owe a 17 to 4 shots edge. They've been for either side with this game well in hand. Just hope you escape without any injuries. The Nationals will have gone 5 0 oh, 1 on today's festivities against their colleagues from. Ohio Elite out of the Cincinnati, Ohio area. And this has been an absolute dominating effort by the 0506 national side. Sabellian Royer, 2023 Mr. Soccer winner on the high school circuit in Michigan. Scored four times. He scored four straight goals for the Nationals, the second through the fifth goals. He continues to impress various levels of the soccer pyramid. Another 30 seconds of stoppage there for equipment malfunction. But with a 6 nothing advantage, I, I doubt the official is going to add that much time on the stoppage time. We've had... Well, typically you don't. Typically, I mean, obviously this is, you know, at, at the high... When there's something, when we say something more important, when we mean like, you know, you're talking about the World Cup, or you, <laughs> you're not going to, you know, you're not going to give, you're not going to do that. You're going to you're gonna keep the game going to go. It, it is what it is. But here you're not going to, for safety reasons, you do that. You know what I mean? There's no reason to have a game continue on after the 90th minute, you know, and stoppage time. The U11 game uh, ended 7-0, I believe, is what we were told, uh, in favor of the Nationals, is what we were uh, told. It's currently rolling at the bottom of your screen in our ticker, MSN Live ticker, that U11 matchup. 7-0. And again, while we will get that uploaded here later this afternoon, like I said, we're going to regroup. A great group. We'll, uh, or sorry, regroup. We're gonna eat some food, and then we'll uh, upload it up. As we get right across into the 82nd minute, the pace has slowed down as the officials are having a conversation on the front of the benches for the Ohio Elite. It's my understanding that not only is Jordan Klein obviously a great soccer player. Also, Val Victorian for you to guys now this year. Congratulations, top of the class at Ike. That is, I mean, hey, that to be your number one student. I, now that I think, I, I do think that these schools now have like three or four Val Victorians typically now. It used to be just one, but now I feel like that they do, they do kind of spread it out a little bit, give a couple different you know people an opportunity to be a Val Victorian. Is, but it's still an honor, man. You're talking about being the number one, number two, top four students in your school. You know, so that's that's pretty cool. We're told his mother is a teacher. Wow. Great soccer player, okay, great so student. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good cutback. Mopolis right at the near post, and that one finds the back of the net. So now an assist and a goal. And now it's 7-0. Uh, Goal coming right at the 82nd minute mark. Fourteen from 
Number 14 is the one that got the goal. I wasn't sure who got the assist. And his number 14 is Demopolis is the one that got the goal. So 83rd minute. Nationals have this one in hand. So there's ball inside, and now out comes the goalkeeper and Inderhess. And to be fair, I, you know, Joaquin Beatty had a great first half. We've Inderhess has been the, you know, not the he's a recipient of five goals against. But you know, to be fair, he's he really hasn't had a chance. I mean, all every shot he's had faced, you know, he's had to face has just been brilliant. <laughs> They've been cannons. I mean, actual you know, bangers. You know, and and it's a different it's a different second half as far as defensively here for Ohio Elite. So I I would love to have seen what he would have looked like in the first half, uh, just because again, Beatty had a great first half. Defensively, they were limiting the opportunity. I just don't think there's as many open looks as you're seeing here now in the second half. The floodgates have definitely opened. We're now in the 85th minute, 85th minute, sorry. <laughs> Couldn't spit that one out. No worries. 7 nothing Nationals over the Ohio Elite in the 05-06 division of ECNL, Ohio Valley Conference. The Nationals have not let up. They've been relentless here in the second half. This was a 2 nothing game heading into the 50th minute. When Sebi Roy scored his second goal and the floodgates open after that, it's been all Nationals here in the second half. 10-1 to on shots overall. They've been able to score five goals off those 10 shot attempts. Just a brilliant second half performance by Sebi Roy and his National SC teammates to get the victory here at Auburn Hills Avondale High School. 20 miles northwest of Detroit's been the site. We'll be back here tomorrow for six more games with the Nationals and the Ohio Premier, Dublin, Ohio, just outside Columbus. It's been a fun, long day, a lot of action, a lot of great games. So, so far, Dan, just doing the quick math here for the day, uh, it's 25-3 edge in goals for Nationals. 25 goals, Ohio Elite 3, so just a, a overall great day for the Nationals in regards to you know what they've been able to do here on this CCNL Saturday. The Nationals have done a really good job here, not only with their growth, but also the way that they compete. It's a hard collision on that far side. We got some other club teams warming up for the for a game after this. Non-ECNL matchups. We are done with our broadcast here in, the, in a few minutes, but. Looks like Nationals uh, colors. They may have some lower tiers of club getting ready to have a match here this afternoon. So 87th minute, again, we don't expect there will be much stoppage time. Uh, we will wrap up this third broadcast here on Field 1 here uh, and be back here tomorrow morning, kick off at 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, simultaneously, we'll have both games going on tomorrow, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m. And then tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern, we'll bring you the high school ranking show. Good little hold there, and that might be <laughs> yeah. a yellow card. Yeah, yep, and it will be. <laughs> rightfully so. It's somewhat of a clean second half, but not that time. He had the jersey tugged and held on to it for at least five seconds. And center official quickly to pull out his card as we enter the 88th minute of play. And all nationals today, 7 nothing advantage here as the final minutes are ready to take off.
hearing some football announcing from overseas. I don't know if that's Europe, if that's EPL or not. I can't quite. I'm just hearing a little bit of chatter in my in my headset yeah, from so someone. Got our, something going on in the background. Our crowd cam, you know, our crowd noise uh, mic that we got going on. So. Turn that down, so. But here we are, 88th minute, about to head into the 89th minute. It's seven nothing. Two first half goals, five second half goals. Sebi Roy. Sebi Roy had four of them, but they just, I think the referees blew the final whistle. Yeah. So uh, he may be a little, little quicker than we thought because our clock is as. 89, but hey, you know, I'm not going to fight them on that. That is, uh, you know, the referee made his decision, and and rightfully so. But, hey, 7 nothing, your final score here in this 06 or 05-06 matchup between the Nationals and Ohio Elite. Again, seven total goals, two in the first half and four five here in the second. It was Whistler, it was Sebi Roy in the 16th, the 50th, the 58th. And then in, we saw Sebi Roy get another one, and then we saw, and then we saw who got the other one. It was it was uh, seven and fourteen got the that's final right, two that's goals. That's right. Yep. So Solomon Gambone got the sixth, and then the, the seventh and final goal was uh, number fourteen in Nico Demopoulos. And that is your scoring here from Dick Pye Stadium in Auburn Hills, Michigan. For Dan Sticker, I'm Jonathan Turner, and all the rest of our MSM production crew. We want to thank you for stopping by. If you didn't do so, subscribe. That's only you'll find out more about what we do here. Share this with your friends and family. And guess what? We'll be back here next time for more soccer. So long, everybody.